You're welcome back. So quickly, I'm going to go through uh, examples on the recovery factor. Now we have this example here, and uh, I'm just going to read it out. It says, considering the following as typical for the compressibilities of the oil, water, and gas at a pressure of 2,000 PSI, compare and contrast the recovery contributed by the oil, water, and gas expansion. expansion. Okay, so the um, compressibility of oil is given as uh, 15 times 10 to the power minus 6 PSI. That's of water. This compressibility of water, C subscript W. This is C subscript uh, O for compressibility of oil. C subscript W for compressibility of water, 3 times 10 to the power minus 6. And uh, C subscript G, that's CG. Uh, the compressibility is given as 500 times 10 to the power minus 6. So here we can see that um, that of water is the least, meaning that the compressibility of water, in other words, the expansion of water uh, contributes least to the uh, recovery of oil uh, or the reservoir feed from this uh, particular reservoir. Okay, so followed by the compressibility of, uh, compressibility of water, which is 15 times 10 to the power minus 6, and followed by compressibility of gas. And in one of our classes, I've explained uh, what this means. Uh, so um, for emphasis, uh, this 15 times 10 to the power minus 6 means that uh, for every uh, a thousand, a, a million barrel of, of oil, of reservoir fluid, uh, uh, 15, barrels of, 15 barrels of reservoir fluid will be added. Uh, when there is a drop in pressure, okay, there's a drop in per PSI, that's one PSI. And uh, for water, for every one million barrel of, of the reservoir fluid, uh, what is added is three barrels uh, per drop PSI uh, pressure. And then for gas, you have for every a million barrel of fluid, uh, 500 barrel is added per uh, uh, a drop in PSI. So what this means is that the compressibility of gas is quite um, beneficial to the production of your reservoir fluid. So if I read what is here, it says it is evident that the contribution of EV total supply by the oil and water expansion will only be significant if both the initial volumes of oil and water, initial volumes of oil and water are large. In contrast, because of the very high compressibility of gas, even a relatively small volume of gas cap will contribute significantly to the uh, oil production. So what this is saying is that uh, the presence of your gas cap in the reservoir, um, uh, the presence of gas cap leads to the production, okay, contributes significantly to the production of your reservoir fluid. Here we see that the CG is 500 times 10 to the power minus 6 PSI, contributing about 500 barrels for every drop in PSI. Okay, so when there is an expansion, uh, when there is an expansion of your gas cap, what happens? It contributes, the energy of that gas cap contributes to uh, the production of your reservoir fluid compared to CO and CW. CG is the highest followed by CO, which is 15, which we add about 15 barrels, and followed by uh, CW, of which is compression, we add about three barrels. So that's what water is the least. So if the volume of oil and the volume of water are, are large, uh, remember your, your DV equations the, from the uh, previous uh, video, your DV equations, which includes uh, the compressibility, uh, the compressibilities, and the change with uh, with uh, with pressure. So, if the uh, water volume and the oil volume are quite large, uh, we we may have uh, the change the production of reservoir fluid a large production of reservoir fluid. Okay, but in contrast, because of high compressibility of gas, even a relatively small volume of gas will lead to will lead to this because this is the ICG. So CG has a, a a large role to play when it comes when it exists. Okay, when your gas cap exists in your reservoir, so CG has a large role to play in the production 
of your reservoir volume. So when you even have a very small gas cap, um, the expansion of that gas cap leads to a high production of energy, which leads to um, uh, a high production of, of oil from your reservoir or, or generating your reservoir, reservoir fluid. Okay, so what we're trying to say in essence is that you have to understand the effect of your CO, your CW, and CG in the recovery of fluids from your reservoir uh, system, from your reservoir system. Okay, so I can give you a question like this. I'll give you the VO, the VW, and the VG, and then you insert into the equation and then calculate um, your DV, your DV total your DV total, and then you must be able to discuss, okay, if I give you CG and I ask you to compare and contrast your CO, your CW, and CG uh, with respect to your DV total, you should be able to, to explain, explain that. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Uh, so we have another, another example here. Uh, given that the oil produced, that's your NP, and cumulative gas oil ratio, that's your RP, um, uh, gas oil ratio, uh, RP, uh, this is gas oil ratio produced or gas produced, are listed in the table below as functions of the reservoir, average reservoir pressure over the first few years of production. Okay, so here your P high, that's your initial, uh, initial reservoir pressure, and your bulk pump pressure is uh, about 3,000, uh, 3,300, about 3,330 3, PSI to be specific. And the size of the gas cap is uh, HEM, uh, that's gas cap size is 0 0.4. Okay, so your uh, recovery factor is given as your HEMP, that's your oil produced over HEM. Your HEM is uh, your uh, oil, oil originally in place, that's your OHIP, okay? That's the whole IP. And your NP, that's the amount of oil that is produced over the total volume of oil or the total oil that you have in your reservoir. So this is given by this. Here you have BOI. I'm sure you're familiar with this already. Uh, we've taken some of these in the previous videos. So we have your BO minus BO high uh, plus RSI minus RSBG, uh, which defines uh, the total NP produced. And then you have your BO plus RP minus RS. This is a gas produced multiplied by the BG. Okay, so you have this. Uh, let's look at the, the table in the next slide, and then we come back to the slide. Okay, so this is the table. You have the pressure. Uh, here says this, the initial reservoir pressure is equal to PV. So I can ask you to explain the implication of this. What does this mean? What does this mean? Whereby the initial reservoir pressure equals to your PV. Uh, bubble point pressure. This is your basic reservoir engineering. So yeah, I'm taking you through the basics so that you understand uh, the physics of the system. You understand some basic concepts on RP, RS, B, B, O, B, G, um, B, G, B, O. Okay. So this is your NP, uh, your oil produced. So here there was no production. This was the initial pressure. And then as pressure drops below the bubble point. Okay. So here you discover that um, uh, immediately, they eat 3,300 uh, uh, PSI pressure. What happens? Initially, there was no production. And then as pressure begins to drop, because you need a pressure, pressure drop for uh, production to occur. You remember the pressure drop that occurs, um, that, uh, occurs between your PI and your PB, your PI and your PB, and then your PB uh, pressure drops up to ad abandonment uh, pressure. So this is your P high, uh, which equals PB. And then your abandonment pressure here is about uh, 2,400. But most of the time, this is still quite high. There will still be production around this area, uh, depending on the technical and economic factors that we have discussed before now. Okay, so you have the NP in MMSTB. This is million uh, stock time barrel. You have it here. You have your RP as a SCF by SCB is the gas oil ratio produced. Okay, you have your GVO. Uh, this is produced uh, to the surface. You have your BO. Uh, BO who describes your reservoir barrel per SCB. Uh, you understand what your BO is. 
please check the uh, videos, previous videos. Then you have your RS, your RS is solution gas oil ratio, which I'd already explained to you, SCF or STB. This is a gas uh, that is dissolved in your oil. And you have, initially you have your 510 as pressure drops, the, an amount is produced, 510 minus 4, 477 is produced, you have 477, and then it produces up to uh, 352. You have 352 left in your oil. 352 SCF per STB of gas dissolved in your oil, left dissolved in your oil at 2,400 PSI. And then you have your BG, your BG, your BG. This is the gas formation volume factor in reservoir barrel per SCF. Okay, so let's go back. So we have we have the recovery factor here, recovery factor here. Okay, so um, your hand P over hand, uh, your hand P over hand. Uh, you have all the details in the in the table, and then you have to calculate your recovery factor at three one five zero psi. Uh, so you have this. You just slot it in. You pick all the values, uh, all the values from the table. Don't forget your RSI will be 510, your BO high will be 1.2511. This is your P high, okay? This is your NP, is your RP, okay? So RSI minus RS, that will be uh, at 3150, you have, you, this is your RSI, 510 minus 447, okay? So let's go back. And then you have this. So I wanted to complete the calculations. I'm sure there's something you can do easily, complete the calculations complete the calculation and you have your answer. So you I, I can ask you to um to calculate your recovery factor at any of the at any of the pressures and then com compare. Uh was this able to say some few things on why you don't have the same recovery factor or do you think you're going to have the same recovery factor at every pressure? Okay, no. Okay, recovery factor definitely changes as pressure as pressure drops in the life of the reservoir, okay? So does it increase or decrease? I want you to find out yourself. Calculate the recovery factor at 3150, calculate it at 3000, calculate it at 2850, at 2550, okay? So you calculate the recovery factors and let me know uh, what, your, what your, your answer is and uh, your comparison, okay? So thirdly, um, the role of a reservoir engineer is to formulate uh, the formulation of the optimal recovery plan for the reserves. Okay, so um, for the reserves, I'm going to do another video on reserves so that you know what reserve is and types of reserves that we have in reservoir engineering. So uh, your reserve is definitely what you have, okay? Like you have a water in a, in a GB tank, Okay, so that's like your reserve, what you have, what you have within uh within a time frame, within a time frame. And uh, most of the time in petroleum in petroleum engineering, engineering specifically, uh, we talk about uh economy viable viable reserve. So for a reservoir engineer, you must be able to formulate a realistic time frame. You don't have all the whole world to produce that reservoir to produce oil or gas as the case may be from that reservoir so you need a realistic time frame to optimally recover the hydrocarbon and it's optimal because you can't recover everything just like you said that uh, recovery factor can never be 100 so you cannot recover everything but optimally uh whether by uh, technical factors or economic factors optimally at a point at which it is profitable for your company or for your team uh, um, to recover the fluid from the reservoir. So we must be able to, uh, to formulate their realistic time frame, time frame, time frame for the recover of the recovery of the hydrocarbon. Okay, here it says predicting the future time frame recovery of the reservoir and the producing wells is the most important part in the economic analysis of the field for further development and expenditures. I hope that is quite clear. So you have to know, be able to predict, okay, this reservoir is going to produce for the next 30 years, it's going to produce for the next 50 years, it's going to be here for the next 60 years. Is it going to be economical? That is one um, 
question that your team was able to answer. Uh, producing this well over 50 years, over 30 years, would it benefit uh, this company? Okay, would it bring profits? It's going to be economical. Uh, looking at uh, the rising, rising of, uh, looking at the rising of uh, foil, foil price, uh, um, crude oil price in international markets, or fall, whether rise or fall of uh, uh, crude price in the international market, or some other technical factors, would it be economically viable, viable to um, to recover the reservoir fluid from that from the system from the reservoir system, and also to forecast the performance of a, of a gas field or oil field as the case may be, and its existing producing wells, and its existing producing wells. Sources of energy for producing the hydrocarbon system must be identified and their contribution to reservoir behavior must be evaluated. So to forecast the performance of uh, whether it's a gas field, whether it's a oil field, you have to understand the production wells. Uh, you are carrying out injection, the injection wells, the sources of energy that surrounds the system. Uh, I think we have a video on that already. So the energy that backs up your system, um, uh, and you have to understand them for you to be able to produce the hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon system. Would your aquifer, if, it, if, if the innate energy, that's the primary energy of your reservoir is from the aquifer, would your aquifer last as long as, as 50 years? Would the energy of your aquifer be able to sustain your reservoir, produce your reservoir for the next 50 years, for the next 30 years, or would it be for the next 20 years? So all these calculations have to be done, and uh, there has to be a decision making decision uh, within your uh, within your team and um, understand um, understand your reservoir, understand understand the process, understand understand the system, understand the um, your reservoir as a whole, um, uh, the flow of your fluid, uh, <clears throat> the static processes, the dynamic processes. The flow within your reservoir system, the flow along the pipe, you have to understand all this, understand the behavior of your reservoir in order to be able to tell the time frame. Okay. So as a reservoir engineer, these are your major, major um, uh, tasks that you have to uh yeah, you have to carry out. Okay. So I'll go back quickly as a reservoir engineer. Your fundamental role to estimate the hydrocarbon resource volume in place. Okay, you must be able to uh, estimate that. Uh, secondly, to determine the recovery factor. We have seen why recovery factor is important, why we need to understand the energy of our system. Okay, and thirdly, formulation of the optimal recovery plan for the reserve. Okay, so in summary, we have looked at who a reserve engineer is, the rules of a reserve engineer and the relevance of recovery factor. I want to go through the exercises, uh, go through the text that has been uh, stated for this, uh, for this course, okay? And I'll see you in the next, in the next video. Thank you very much.